Shalom, Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kwadash. I would also like to give a double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. I would also like to say peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. Starting with the 144,000 men of Israel, which would consist of the servants, the prophets, whom have been ordained since the foundations of this earth to sing this new song, which comes in the form of this gospel, which would be preached throughout all four corners of this earth and rest upon the heirs of the innumerable multitude of Israel, which consists of the men, women, and children that may be scattered throughout all four corners of this earth. It's just by on back again. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. And I just wanted to get into a brief lesson and uh Lord willing, um, you know, share a uh share some information with you, Akiyam and Akwaf, uh from uh, redacted, uh going into some uh you know uh you know World War Three information, you know, the build up to it at least. You know, we understand that those war drums those war drums are beating, you know, and, you know, we understand that that uh, device, the size of a grain of rice uh, must come first, you know, but as it's written in Jeremiah 51, there will be rumors of war. You see, and this is what we're watching. This is what we're watching for these rumors, because we know it's going to be rumor one year and rumor another, and then it's going to be ruler against ruler. And those of us that are in the know, those of us that Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai put his spirit on, we're watching this closely, man. Because we're seeing the buildup, okay, to World War Three, man. And we are to be vigilant as commanded, right? And watching the times that we're in, paying close attention to the prophecies, okay, that are springing forth. And this lesson came through the inspiration of the beloved brother Yasha Moth. He brought this out last night. Uh, heavy information within this clip. I'm only going to play like the first three minutes of it um, and speak on, you know, speak on what, you know, came through the spirit. But needless to say, I'll leave the uh, I'll leave this video in the description box, Lord willing. And uh, for you, Aki, I'm not to look into it. You know, further. So through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, the first scripture I want to get was the book of Isaiah, the 46th chapter, because this is what separates our power, you know, from these idols, man. It's prophecy. See, our power declared these things from the beginning. Let's get this real quick. The book of Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 9. So like in verse 9 and it reads, Remember the former things of old, for I am Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai and there is none else. I am Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai and there is none like me. Why? Because of prophecy. This is what separates our power from these idols. He says before and then it comes to pass, man. <laughs> you see, for example, we were we we're in we're 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 under the uh, foot of the heathen, right? Our so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, the, the the true biblical Israelites. Before it happened, Yahweh Bashim Yahusha said it was going to happen. In Deuteronomy twenty-eight, he said that we'll be the tail and they'll be the head. The hill sent an enemy against us of a fierce countenance. These things happen after the fact. If we transgressed and then listen. We transgressed and didn't listen, and look what happened. You see, and that's just one example. All right, World War Three is another example. All right, the Karagma is another one. Us waking up is another one. You see, let's continue on. Declaring the end from the beginning. See that? And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Prophecy saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure you see, and what's the Lord's pleasure? To bring forth World War Three. Okay, as part of the as part of the removal of these heathen, beginning with evil E, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Okay, this is why there's uh articles like this one. Well, videos rather, and articles. Many forms of inf information going into um, you know, this the third world world war, you know, brewing. But needless to say, let's get this real quick through the spirit. I'm only going to play three minutes of it or so, and then we'll get back into the scriptures and make the point, Lord willing. 
ramping up additional assets, money, weapons to the Middle East. Israel says it will wipe Iran off the face of the earth if Hezbollah intervenes in Gaza. Uh, the Turks seem to be motivated to mediate. We heard from uh, Erdogan over the past few minutes saying he would like to mediate a peace. This flies in the face of what Secretary of State Anthony Blinken just said over the weekend, which is, we're not interested in any kind of ceasefire, which is unbelievable. Joining me now is Colonel Douglas McGregor, who just wrote a new piece saying that the Biden administration should lead the charge to support a ceasefire. Colonel, it appears they're really going in the opposite direction with Blinken's comments yesterday and now Erdogan coming out and saying, hey, we're, we're happy to mediate a peace here. No, I think that's true. And it looks as though the uh, <clears throat> same people controlling events in Jerusalem are controlling events in Washington. And they are unanimous in their desire for a major war. And I don't think people understand the implications. People are viewing this as Hamas, as a, a, an enemy that richly deserves to be destroyed. There's no argument about that. The problem is, uh, if you want to destroy Hamas, how do, you, how do you go about doing it? And collective punishment that involves 2.2 million people is not a very popular way to do business. And particularly at this point in time, because the whole region is seething with anger over the attacks on the civilians in Gaza. There's no dis no debate in the rest of the region about who's responsible. It's Israel. So you have the Israelis and all of their neighbors talking past each other. We are in a position to somehow or another address that and, and move this out of the realm of inevitable regional war into something more manageable. But there doesn't seem to be any interest in doing so. The United States moving aircraft carriers, additional assets into the region. You make the point that this, you know, you're, you're right there involved in this. This is a very dangerous prospect for the United States. Oh, it is. People don't seem to understand that today's Middle East is radically different from the Middle East of 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. The last major war was the 73 war where Egypt and Syria attacked Israel, and Israel ultimately prevailed, although it was from time to time touch and go. Today, the Arab states are far more, I would argue, co cohesive. Uh, the governments are stronger. They have more technology at their disposal, and there's a greater willingness to weigh in collectively. And today, we're also talking about Turkey and Iran as playing a major role, and as a result, Russia. Russia cannot sit idly by if Iran ends up being attacked by us. It will feel obligated to intervene because the Iranians have supported the Russians against the uh, Ukrainian proxies. So this... this See that? <laughs> and that's the domino effect. That's what you call a domino effect. And this is the works of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And the reason why these Israelis have no intentions on backing off... OK, it's because it's part of the Lord's will. Scripture tells us in Jeremiah 49 that the least are going to draw out Babylon, the least of the flock. You see, these are these Israelis, these small hats, man, they're going to draw out the whore. OK, which is going to end up drawing out the bear. You see, and this is something they can't change. They can't. This is the Lord's will. This is his determination. Zephaniah, the third chapter tells you the, 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 the Lord's determination is to gather the nations, man. See, this is what he's doing. Why? Because he's preparing war. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is preparing war, man. This is how these demons are going to be removed. Through war. Okay? The same way they came in is the same way they're going out. And now these little nations, you heard them say, uh, these smaller nations over there in the Middle East, and there ain't no pushovers no more, man. You see? There are no pushovers no more. Let's go ahead. Because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, has, his word has come forth. You see? The book of Joel, chapter 3. In verse 9, and it reads, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Pre and these are the natural Gentiles, the heathen, right? Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Come up where? To the valley of Jehoshaphat. 
See, the Valley of Yahweh Shapat, right out there in the Middle East. See, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears, right? Your agricultural tools, beat them into weapons, man. Okay, AK-47s, laser guns and missiles, man. <laughs> you see, hey, let the weak say I'm strong, man. And this is what's going on. You see, these Middle Eastern uh, countries are now strong, man, where they were once weak. You heard what that colonel said, man. <laughs> that's why there's a horrible vision, okay, that's coming from the east. Let's go get that. This is a heavy precept right here. The book of Second Ezra. The Bible's undefeated. Second Ezra 15. And verse 28, and it reads, Behold, an horrible vision, which a vision is what? A prophecy. See? And the appearance thereof from the east. <laughs> hey, take a glance at what's going on in the Middle East right now. We just, we just watched the clip going into it. What's going on right now in the east? Could be, could surely, could, sure, could very well be uh, the, the forerunner to this war. You see? Let's continue on. Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, man. And the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth. That all they which hear them may fear and tremble and you see these Middle Eastern countries they're coming together okay they're coming together man you see just to come up against these small hats you see but this is part of biblical prophecy this must come to pass see for, there's a time and season for everything man and we're living in a time and season of war Why? Because a changing of guard is taking place, man. But Yahweh Bashim Yahusha is going to remove Esau and establish Jacob. But it's going to come through violence, man. Pursuant to Revelations 18 and 21. Let's continue on. Also, the Carmenians, which are the Iranians, raging in wrath, shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood. And with great power shall they come. And join battle with them. See? And show waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. And we know Esau is the modern day Assyrian, man. Okay? We know this. See? Evil is going to be removed, man. Through, through war. Because you know this man is not going to be able to help himself. He's going to get involved. Even though it's a bad idea for him to get involved, but he's gonna. Because World War Three must happen. You see, so we can imagine that, that Karagma is running around the corner, man. Okay? When we look and see how close... See, the Lord's beautiful. The Lord has all these prophecies hitting simultaneously. Almost simultaneously. You see, because we know these devils are trying to transition into a new digital currency. Right, which is going to be evolved around that 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 device, and here it is, the Lord stirring up uh, the Middle East. This is absolutely beautiful, and prophecy speaking loud and clear, man. Prophecy is undefeated. The scriptures are undefeated. <laughs> you see, the scriptures are undefeated, man. We here, baby. We here. Let's get this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 49. And verse 20, and it reads, Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord. You see, and what did the Lord say in Isaiah 46? He said, his counsel shall stand. And he'll, he sh he's going to do all his pleasures, right? Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Edom. See that? Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. And his purpose that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Teman, which are the Germans, 
Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out, those Israelis, man. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. They're going to lose. <laughs> They're going to lose, lose, man. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall. See? Why? Because of those missiles are going to fly, man. There's going to be a thermonuclear fallout. At the cry, the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. You see that? These demons are out of here, man. These devils are through. Let's close on right here. And we're going to keep bringing these precepts out, man. Because why? Because they don't lose ammo. Whether you people believe it or not, these prophecies are being spoken into existence. By who? The servants, the prophets of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Revelations 18 and 21. And it reads, And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon, which is a.k.a. America, be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. You live by the sword, you get deleted by the sword. Your judgment is at hand, man. <laughs> you ain't that uh, 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 proud to be American. Uh, uh, my, uh, your, your military's on steroids back in the 1950s, 60s. No. When you read, when you continue to watch that video, you're going to find out, all right, that uh, the, the American military is very weak. They don't got enough ground troops. You see? Looking real feeble right about now. But the Lord said, he'll make you small amongst the heathen, man. And you're going to be greatly despised, man. <laughs> hey, we're at the point of Esau Edom's demise, man. Kahalayim la, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All we got to do is keep watching, Akiyam. All we got to do is keep watching. Because we here. We here. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this 144% truth. Lord willing, you Akiyam and Akwaf were edified. Barakate Yahweh, Barakate Yahweh Shai, Kal Halalim La Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rakak Kwadash Shalom.